Hey Improvement Nerds, this is Tom. I'm back with another video. Today I want to be talking about the history and the origins of Lean Six Sigma. So buckle up, let's have a lot of fun. I can't wait to dive into this topic. But before I do that, I strongly encourage you to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button so that you're notified when future videos are uploaded. All right, let's talk about the history of Lean Six Sigma. You can see in this map that training and application of Lean Six Sigma is pretty global, with the highest concentrations being in North America, Asia, Australia, and Japan, as well as parts of Europe. As you know, training around Lean Six Sigma is very intense. So individuals committing to professional growth and development and enrolling in the classes indicate that it's likely that their organization is sponsoring their training. So that we can assume that for every individual trained, there's an organization that is applying Lean Six Sigma and supporting that individual in their certification efforts. On the right side of this picture, you can see a high level overview of the key events that have shaped Lean Six Sigma over time. I'm gonna dive deeper into those key events in the slides ahead. The origins of Lean Six Sigma date all the way back to the early 1800s. And across those hundreds of years, it has looked different, evolving over time to help organizations and operators continuously improve. Many individuals have suggested that use of interchangeable parts was lean in theory, in which Eli Whitney began to experiment with interchangeable parts to allow for industrial production, the musket rifle, and the cotton gin. Prior to implementing interchangeable parts, everything was craft made and production was not scalable. Closely on the heels of this discovery, the scientific management process was introduced. It is a way to organize the workforce in order to make productive use of the resources. Again, with the focus of productivity, Henry Ford evolved the scientific management process to include the assembly line to gain efficiencies in order to produce items, in his case, the car, in a very large scale. This was referred to as mass production. As production grew, quality became ever more important. Improving quality was no easy task, until Schuert introduced a process referred to as the Schuert cycle, or PDSA, which used the ideas from the workforce to improve the quality of the process. Building on Schuert's work, Joseph Duran expanded the definition of quality. In Schuert's era, quality was only defined as quality improvement. Duran took that a step further, saying that quality was quality planning, quality improvement, and quality control. This was referred to as the quality trilogy. As quality improvement grew, experts flocked to the science. One of those experts was Edwards Deming. He leveraged the work that was done by Schuert and Duran in order to come up with a management process that could be used to help rebuild Japan post-World War II. Deming's work laid the foundation that would later become Toyota's production system. As use of Deming's principles grew within industry, global competition heightened. Over time, many American industries started to fall behind, one of which was Motorola. In 1986, the leader, Bill Smith, decided to take Motorola on a journey of excellence. He sought to improve the quality of Motorola's products so that they were world class. In 1988, Motorola was awarded the Malcolm Baldridge Award for Quality Excellence. The process that was used to transform Motorola's operations was referred to as Six Sigma. Overseas, continuous improvement and a strong focus of quality continued. One of the early adopters, as mentioned previously, was Toyota. The Toyota production system allowed Toyota to become competitive on a global scale. American industry became curious as to what Toyota was doing. In 1988, a study was performed to understand what Toyota was doing in order to improve its quality and its operations. A result of that study was the key term, lean, which was how Toyota was improving its operations and creating a culture of individuals committed to quality and continuous improvement. Toyota's focus on culture really awakened the American industry that they too should be focusing on culture. Jack Welch at General Electric, who had been using Six Sigma for years, began to tinker with change management and implemented a change acceleration process that when coupled with Six Sigma helped to improve the success rate of the projects. 
Year after year, organizations continue to apply Lean Six Sigma to improve their performance. Those early adopters eventually began to dethrone those individuals and organizations that were resistant to applying Lean Six Sigma in continuous improvement within their organization. In 2009, Toyota dethroned GM as the global sales leader in the automotive industry, causing a boom in adoption of Lean Six Sigma. As we sit today, Lean Six Sigma is called a variety of things. Within organizations, we often hear it called operational excellence, continuous improvement, quality improvement, value creation, or relentless simplification. All of these efforts have one thing in mind, is to standardize your processes so that they're highly reliable, that they're easy to perform, and that they maximize value for all stakeholders.